yes, uh, thank you very much for for inviting me for chapter Ivo's chapter. So uh, this is my case. This is the uh, seventy six years old woman uh, admitted to our hospitals because of uh, severe chest pain, and uh, this uh, patient uh, has a hypertension and stable coronary artery disease with uh, medication every day. And also, uh, she has the uh, uh, diabetes mellitus. And this is the plus uh, test uh, at, uh, on admission. Uh, we have the uh, renal function is okay. Uh, uh, is uh, was elevated a little bit. And we have the uh, good uh, HbA1c. And the uh, ECG at, uh, on admission, we, it looks uh, look normal. This is the chest X-ray. It's also uh, no significant uh, anomaly. And this is the, the echocardiography, mm -hmm. no abnormal uh, uh, This is the diagnosis of the patient. We have the unsta unstable angina, high risk unstable angina. And in, in the patient with hypertension and diabetes mellitus. And we uh, took the patient to the cat lab. And this is the the left side angiogram, you see the left side angiogram, we have the moderate uh, calcified lesion in the proximal extended to the, to the mid LED. And we also see some haziness, haziness in the middle, uh, maybe thrombus um, or calcified uh, lesion in the mid, uh, mid uh, RCA. And uh, at that time we uh, checked the IVUS. This is the IVUS for LED in the, in the left hand side, and this is the IVUS for RCA in the right hand side. Yeah, so, so let's talk one by one. LED, you see the vessel size is 1 to 3.5, and the calcium is here, is a little bit circumferential, but in general, yeah, just play the LED. You see, the calcium is not contiguous for the most, and majority was deep. And even this one is the calcium is 90 degree, but only one place we see very focal close to circumference, but most of the calcium is not too much. So that's I was findings. All right, please proceed, okay. Dr. Fu. And, um... Before, because the LED lesion is more significant than the RCA lesion, we uh, put a stand, uh, we use a balloon, empty balloon, and after that, we put a very long fan, 48 by 30 by 48 for the LED stand. You see the final result is a very good result from the, uh, at the final. And, uh, Three days later, uh, three days after the LED standing, we uh, uh, took the patient to the cat lab again, and we take the angiogram and prepare the lesion for the RCA uh, intervention. Akiko, please uh, help us to comment about the adverse findings. Sure. I think whenever you see this type of the hazardness, you have to have two differential diagnoses, either thrombus or college nodule, which looks like college already we are start seeing here. And, but still, this is not a region, Luma is big. And then we look for the place, there is some haziness. And starting at the nine o'clock and coming here, uh, not yet, but calcium is okay for now. Mm -hmm. And that's the place which we see the haziness. So it's quick, but it's again, typical calcifying audio. And the calcified nodule is very frequent in the mid right coronary artery and next is the left domain bifurcation. So it's really typical. This patient already didn't have the calcified nodule, but had been the calcified nodule on the right coronary artery, which is really consistent to what we know in the literature. All right. Before, before we move, uh, Dr. Vu, let me ask uh, Dr. Amir now. Amir, so what, what do you think if you deal with this situation? So what is your strategy after seeing the, the calcified nodule on the, on the proximal of the RCA? Yes, thank you. So I think, um, I think before we went to IVUS, I think seeing this RCA with uh, a defect in the proximal part, it's a filling defect. 
uh, with no, let's say, uh, acute coronary syndrome involving the RCA, I think we are quite sure that uh, this is uh, probably not uh, thrombus, but it's more like uh, calcium. And seeing this uh, ibus uh, and uh, the calcium protruding to the lumen, which is uh, Professor Akiko mentioned that it is confirmed this is calcified nodules. Uh, I think uh, the way to go is, of course, to deal with uh, some kind of atherectomy, whether it is rotational atherectomy or orbital atherectomy. So I think, uh, although this is uh, quite short, but I think, um, I don't think the balloon-based atherectomy is, uh, is enough for this. I think it's, we need a rotablation or uh, orbital atherectomy to do. Thank you. All right. Okay. I, uh, thank you. I think thank it's you. a. I yes. think it's a corporeal lesion. Is LED. It's, it's, I think it's RCA. is a non corporeal lesion, and uh, which uh, is the area is quite nice. So I think it's uh, is a, a physiology assessment is the one of option. Okay. Great comment. Uh, <laughs> this is also my question because it looks like MLA is not the type, but. Uh, Anything you we, we want to intervene this this kind of lesion, right? So, <laughs> I don't know whether it's very popular or not. So Juan, is this a, do you do physiology in this kind of situation? So Juan, in this case, since since, since uh, I mean looking at angiographically, I probably would have uh, gone ahead to treat, but uh, looking at the ivus uh, may may well be because uh, quite often I'm pleasantly surprised by physiology when you do FFR and things uh, for the RCA in particular. Uh, tight eighty percent lesions may give FFR point eight five. Um, so yes, uh, I think possible, right. uh, but I probably yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but anyway, so uh, Dr. Wu, uh, you know, have planned to intervene this uh, kind of situation. So uh, okay, let let's proceed, Dr. Wu, please. Okay, before going, can you show one more time, Ivers? I think there is one important thing. Just play the Ivers for the right coronary artery. So if you decide to treat this right coronary artery by rotablator, you would know where your wire bias is go. So IBIS location is really tells you where the wire is go. So if you come to the calcified nodule, you remember coming through where the IBIS and wire location coming through, through. Yeah. So you see the Actually, the true college file no do is, oh, that's one, right? So really the wire location is at on the top of the college file nodule. So this is really good uh, sign. Your wire or rotablator may go to the top of the college file nodule. That's it. Great, point. great, great comment. Please, Dr. Wu. Yes. Uh... Because of uh, classified nodal, and uh, we want to do the PCI in this case, uh, so we we uh, prepare the rota plater. This is the rota plater wise, the rota wise floppy, but two point oh. Because uh, we measure the the minimal uh, lumen area is about one seven, so we choose a uh, bur two o and speed about one sixty thousand. And this is the uh, the IVOS finding uh, after we try some uh, rota run. In the left hand side is uh, the is the run, and the right hand side you can see the. Uh, please, Akiko, please uh, comment about the IVOS uh, 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 finding after the the first run with rota two point oh. Yeah, this is we see this picture almost three times today, meaning the nice reverberation. And also the calcified nodule was convex shape, but now concave. And you see same pattern again, again. So that's the place where the rotabulator po uh, polish. So that's indicating you debug and polishing the surface because of the nice reverberation. So uh, um, after the first run with uh, speed 160,000, uh, we think the, the lumen area of the RCA is uh, good, but I want to make a bigger uh, lumen for the RCA at the calcified nodal. We reduce the speed a little bit from 160,000 to 140,000. And we, after that, we check the IVOS again. Yeah. This is really impressive, meaning that you see the many calcium has gone. <laughs> 
again, you see that something polish, polish surface and reverberation, but now you see much larger, like the cavity. Starting here, you start seeing the, after this calcium, this branch, you see the calcified nodule segment. It's coming soon. That's a place you see the concave shape and almost like nodule disappear. Oh, I'm sorry, here. That's you see the polish. Yep. So beta abrasion. Can can I comment to Dr. Wu? Sure. Please, please. Yes, yes, Dr. Wu, uh, because uh, I think this is a very big RCA, a very, very dominant. Uh, do you do some time of preempt preemptive uh, like um, pacemaker for this patient? Because I think uh, the risk of bradyodysmia is quite high. Uh, but the other thing, I think the, the few, uh, there are a few case series regarding how to handle this uh, to prevent the bradyodysmia is uh, some uh, expert uh, practicing uh, by not uh, putting the temporary pacemaker, but they're using the aminophilin IV let's say 200 to 300 milligram, just to uh, prevent the bridge arrhythmia. What do you think? Thank you for very uh, good uh, question about the, the temporary pacemaker. In, uh, in our center, uh, at the beginning, we, we, when we run the rota later, we usually use a temporary pacemaker for the RCA uh, rota run. But after for a long time, when we, uh, when we uh, have a more experience about the rotaplation. Uh, we uh, we seldom use uh, the temporary pacemaker for the for the uh, for the rota run, except in the case of the patient very high risk rota beta. For example, with the patient very low ejection fraction, for the high very high uh, high risk patient, we, we put a temporary pacemaker for the, this patient. Uh, the the EF is okay, EF uh, is okay, so we. We never use the, the, the temporary pacemaker for in this patient. And sometimes when we use rotor run, we use a long run uh, when we check the, we, if, we, if we have a long run, the, the, the risk of uh, bradycardia is higher than the, the short run. So in our center, we use a long run first and we see the, 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 the rate, heart rate of the patient. And if no, 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 bradycardia, we, we still have a long run. But if we have a, the, the, the bradycardia, we reduce the, the time of the rotor run for, for example, 20 seconds or some, something like that. Great. Uh, please proceed, Dr. Wu. So this is the rotor effect by adverse fighting. Uh, in the left-hand side, you see at the beginning before the rotor run. And uh, in the right-hand side, you see the rotor effect after the some first run uh, with 160,000 uh, speed. And in this uh, slide, you see, uh, compare the high, uh, high speed rotor run and low speed rotor run, we have the bigger debulking uh, for, for the classified nodal. And this is the final, final result of the, we put a stand for the RCA in this adverse finding. And this is the, uh, you can see the picture this picture from Akiko, he, he, he uh, take a picture for me. This is the uh, left-hand side, we see the uh, adverse um, finding. We have kind of spine nodal uh, in, the, in, in, the, in the adverse. And uh, the second picture from the left, we have the uh, 160,000 rota 2.0. We make some debulking, but uh, with the 140,000, we make a bigger bulking. And the last one, we have the stand very good uh, expansion for the RCA. So for conclusion, I think IVERS is uh, very useful for the PCI in the calcified lesion. We can detect the uh, calcified lesion also the indicating for, for rotablation laterectomy. And uh, as uh, Dr. Professor Akiko showed us, the eccentric flag and the Y bias is very important when we do the, the rotablation to prevent the complication for the patient. And finally, we can get the optimal result for the patient. So thank you for, for, for attending this, my, my case. So any comment from the panelists and... and okay, uh, thank you, Davu. It's, it's a really, really a great case. We learned from, so much from your case. Uh, can you back one, one, yes, there you go. Uh, one slide uh, before conclusion, there you go. 
So, uh, so uh, in this uh, slides, does it mean that uh, you did one forty thousand PM first and then one sixty thousand, or is this conversion? Uh, because we we have some uh, some missing typing here. The first one we have run one sixty thousand. Oh, all right. Okay. So, okay. Okay. So, so <laughs> there's something that yeah. new from you. So great, great. Okay, okay. That's good. That's yeah. good. <laughs> all right. In 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 your in your practice, let's say I I ask for Anurok. So Anurok. So you, yeah. you 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 start with one sixty thousand or you or more, and then do a polishing afterwards. So what what is your in your in your daily practice? Uh, so I I change my strategy to do the low data to the high speed low speed concept because at the low speed we have the vibrations and and have more tissue abrasion with the low speed. But sometimes, if you want to pin it at the at the beginning, sometimes I use the high speed first to do the track and do the low speed to make it bigger. So after uh, when you do the low speed, you have to face the the chance of no refill because the tissue tissue debris will be very big and it will cause the it's cause low flow phenomenon very easily. But after I tried this in really long and a really heavy calcification lesion like this, I always impressive of this technique because it's helped me like this picture. It's caused a bigger lumen and it's more easily to crack after I use the scoring balloon and make a better expansion. But last year, I, I saw the paper that, that they do the same, same compared high speed and low speed. In, in Japan, they said the expansion of the stent is the same, but I still like this technique for my practice. If, if I want to see, if I face the slow fall, I try to use the adenosine intercore injection during the procedure to, to, make, to make the flow better before doing the next one. This is the, my key techniques. Do you do a um, cocktail, cocktail thing before you do rotablator? No, oh, no. Okay, just right. just only the routine things. What uh, about Dr. Sugi? Uh, all right. Yeah. Okay, yeah, just one by one. Uh, maybe uh, Dr. Sugi first. Sorry, Gautam. Uh, yeah. Okay, Sugi, is there any 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 comment or any any other uh, strategy? Yeah. Uh, this is uh, yeah representative uh, ex excellent case of the raw speed abrasion. So uh, I think it's a very good treatment. We uh, we always start. Uh, about uh, 180,000 RPM. And then the wire bias is uh, favorable, it's confirmed, then uh, we, we, uh, try, we try well, uh, relatively low speed, 140, uh, up to 140,000 RPM. But, and, uh, so, and the, but the low speed abrasion is, uh, has a risk of the unexpected uh, vessel injury, so we have to check the bi via bias or the good indication is the circumferential severe calcification, I think. And uh, another point is uh, low speed abrasion is, uh, can, it can uh, improve the bradycardia. Uh, so in the high speed, in the high speed, the bradycardia occurred, we set a lower speed, uh, it can improve the bradycardia, I think. Okay, great, great. Gautam? Um, I think uh, one of the things uh, that uh, uh, the operator, Dr. Fu, pointed out is uh, it is very important that uh, the runs are short. If the runs are short, you have less adenosine activation and uh, less bradycardia. With longer runs, you tend to have more bradycardia uh, as with higher RPMs as well. The question that I really wanted to ask uh, the panel of, uh, looks like we have a panel of uh, high calcified uh, lesion operators, uh, but uh, what has your been experience? Some of us have had some experience with administering saline flush after each run of atherectomy. What has been your experience with that? I prefer that because uh, every time I flushing, it means that I, I push the debris down and check the and I always mix the contrast a little bit to check the flow together. That's, that's made me confident to do the next one. It's, it's my tip and tricks that I learned from, from Dr. Misudo in, in the last 10 years ago, that he always do the chart run and, and test every time, yeah, to check the, to check the flow before doing the next one. 
Okay, good. So, uh, okay, we we talk about wire biases a couple of times. So, uh, let's say if we have a wire facing the, the healthy healthy tissue. So, what is your your strategy, Gautam? Do you chain to the intermediate wire, or you just you know manipulation uh, the wire to, to you know to get facing the the calcified one? So, wire bias is the difficult issue, especially for calcified nodules. Uh, in general, we would then try to generally change to a rotor stiff wire, for example, to see if there is a more favorable wire bias with a rotor stiff wire. Sometimes, you know, even that does not give you a favorable bias and you may have to actually maneuver the wire or pull on it gently or advance it gently uh, just before you start the uh, burr going. And uh, that sometimes can help change the bias in the vessel as well. Uh, I've had one operator that I do, you know, uh, that I work with who has also done some work on maneuvering the guide a little bit to kind of help change the wire bias as well. Uh, and so really that's a very complex interaction and, you know, you really need to study what is happening. You may need to take some additional angiographic images in different views, uh, especially for these RCA calcified nodules. It, the right RAO view may sometimes be helpful because you can actually identify the wire against the calcified nodule in the RAO view better sometimes as well. So there's just a whole different variety of tricks uh, that come into play for this. All right, thank you. Because uh, I saw uh, many perforation, uh, you know, maybe uh, related to this kind of issue, especially for the very tortoise uh, vessel with the eccentric plaque, you know, which is very devastating. But uh, for not very tortoise vessel, uh, let's say with a little bit a strat vessel, and then you have a wire bias. Is this uh, uh, also dangerous? Is this any issue in that? Uh, Akiko, maybe you can help me. With the uh, calcified nodule, you have a wire bias, but uh, it's not very tortoise vessel, relatively striped vessel. Is this a really issue now? I or should don't we change know. The... <laughs> okay. All right. uh, Danny, uh, there is a good question here in from the Q&A chat box. Uh, sure. Maybe uh, we can discuss regarding sure, sure. the rewiring in DK crust. There is a DK crust technique for side branch wiring. OCT uh, looks a better in uh, identify the right rewiring. And maybe uh, you guys have uh, some tips and tricks uh, how when we are using IVUS, is there any, any tips, the right uh, way to uh, do the rewiring? So maybe. Yeah, that's great. So, so exactly. comparing IFUS and, and 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 OCT, you know, in in terms to know your 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 wire is. So I don't know, Akiko, you you, you what, what what do you think about that? I think that I would show. I I was in the Doctor Shaoyan change lab, and then always he do the IFUS after the crushing, before rewiring to the circ. He always check. I mean. No, he, first he crush and then he wire to the circ and then he definitely check the wire location from the LED pullback. And I would like to show my slide if you want. I can explain yes. what I'm talking please, about. Please, 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 yeah. please. Yeah, could you unshare your slide? Wonderful, yeah. Okay, so can you see my slide? Yes. Or maybe no. Yes? Yes, yes, we yes. can see okay. clear. Okay, so this is the, actually this is a slide by Dr. Shaoyan Chen, he gave me. And this is the wire location in the circumflex, right? And of course this pullback from the LED to the left domain. And how you can make this wire location easily by IBUS is when you have the IBUS picture on the console, you see this type of picture. You see like the line, this line can rotate the this longitudinal plane. So the first, I recommend to go to the, okay, let's go to something else. That's not the one which I'm going to show, sorry. Okay, no. sorry. Okay, yeah, that's a good picture which I'm trying to show. So this is IBUS pullback from the LED to the left domain to check the wire location to the circ. And how you can confirm is you have to use this longitudinal view. And you see the wire from the left domain to the circumflex is going to the very proximal cell, right? And mm -hmm. how you can confirm is open the IBUS picture and then always you see this line. And then first you look for the 
wire in the sac very distal portion because if you come to the close to the bifurcation there is a strut and it's very confusing which is a circumflex wire so i recommend to go to the very distal to find the very clear wire into the sac once you find that wire you bring this rotate uh, plane to the wire once you bring the this uh plane to the circumflex wire that's in the that and longitudinal plane give you the wire location directory, mm -hmm. and then you can see wire is proximal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so rotate the longitudinal view using the console, and then by checking the wire into the third. That's it. But this has to be done after the wire, but before ballooning. And if you see the wire is too distant, you can rewire and then check again. That's the tip and trick. Uh, how Fantastic. about when the, the lesion is calcified? All the, the lesion are calcified. Is there any impact to knowing the wiring, the position, the position of the wire? Are you asking me? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we have to remember where the plaque located is always opposite side to the carina, right? So if there is a calcium that should be the opposite side of the carina, and then if so, your wire is more likely going to the distal because why pro uh, opposite side, meaning the proximal side is, the calcium is always located to the opposite side, such as proximal side. So, I mean, I would say, uh, if there is a big calcium, it's more likely Kalina shift and more likely difficult to go to the proximal site for sure. Mm. So then you have to think about how to make it better by debugging, et cetera. Yeah. That's, that's uh, I think, by Iba's standpoint. Thank you. There is a few data regarding the side branch wiring is confirmed by OCT, but uh, is I prefer the OCT actually, but is uh, in, in daily practice it, it is not it is it is very difficult to confirm the uh, successful distal wiring or uh, proximal wiring by OCT. So I absolutely agree with uh, is uh, uh, Akiko is, uh, is a presentation is uh, is I think is more Ivers can give the is confirm the is whether is wiring is proximally or distally when we uh, try to the two uh, stenting in the bifurcation region. I think it's really up to you, which you prefer. <laughs> yeah. OCT expert like OCT, they know more how to <laughs> see. But I, I, my, my, I, I wanted to say IBUS can do very easily as well. That's a point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For the OCT lover like me, so sometimes it's it's good to see for the distal, not not for the DK crash technique because in the because we have to use a 3D reconstruction to see the the strut, so that's why, so that's why for the for the Q for the for the provisional stand before kissing is good, but for the DK crash, I think I was or the for the participants they recommend to use the the stand boot or clear stand, the stand enhancing program. This will be very effective to do the DK crash more than the OCT, even though I use a lot of OCT to do the bifurcations. I agree that DK crash is better to use IWAS or stand enhancing technique. Okay, great points.